Hey everyone! Welcome to today's tutorial for displacement maps within Affinity Photo for iPad. I've already got my image open within the software and I'm just going to toggle between the two perso main personas that I will be using within this session in the top left hand corner there, toggling through the photo and the selection personas. Menus work slightly different within Affinity and um, that's something you will have to get used to if you're used to the Adobe software. Um, I'm just going to go back over and duplicate my layer. You can see two have now appeared. The thumbnail is taking a little while to load, but this is mainly due to the sheer amount of software I have open on my iPad currently. Bad, bad habit. So I'm going to create my first adjustment using the adjustments panel on the right hand side. And then I'm going to go down to ranges and I'm going to take the saturation all the way down to turn this to black and white. Merge that down. Normally this wouldn't be part of my process, but for displacement maps, we need to create a very nice contrasty black and white image with a blur. So that is the black and white image done. We just need to add a bit of contrast. I'm just going to go to my adjustments and add a little bit of contrast. Next, we're just going to add a bit of a blur once this has merged down. It's been a little slow. But I think this is just due to the fact that I use this non-stop. The poor thing. So I've just got the filters and I'm looking for my blurs and I'm going to go down to a Gaussian blur. Everything is alphabetically ordered, as you can tell. I'm just going to make this nice and blurry just to give soft edges, not really get rid of too much detail, but enough just to blur it. Okay, I'm going to export this. I'm just going to come up to the menus in the top left hand corner and export. I'm going to choose a JPEG. Shouldn't really matter. I know with Photoshop you usually use a PSD for this. But hey, let's try it. And I'm just going to save this to my folders within my iPad. After I rename it. Is anybody else horrifically bad at naming their files? I am absolutely the worst. So I'm going to be using this for the displacement map. The video is actually going to cut out for a second now. This is because I actually did have several photos open within Affinity Photo. And yeah, it, it just struggled to work on this one, especially with this image being so large. And, you know, I should have known better. But it did save my black and white image that I need. So I'm just going to reduplicate my background layer. And I'm going to come over to the menu again, and I'm going to go to place. Now I'm just going to bring in the image that I want to use as the tattoo for this. So I've just brought it in and I'm using the little nodes just to enlarge it, move it around. Generally getting the place I want to. Within the layers panel in the top right hand corner, I've just gone into the layer options where I've changed the blender mode to multiply. So I'm just moving it around here, trying to get it into place. Yeah, this is looking good. Enlarge it a tiny bit more. Yeah, I like this. Okay. <laughs> okay, I lied, I wasn't happy. <laughs> Okay, let's go back to my layers. So that is in place. Now we're just gonna to go to our filters and scroll along in the menu along the top for distortions and we should find displays towards the bottom. It brings up this option and the displays options within Affinity are pretty cool because you can actually choose a layer you're working on for your displacement map. Um, but I've already made mine. I'm just gonna find it within my files there it is. And attach it. Now you can't see this because it's applied 
to the tattoo layer, if that makes sense. You won't be able to see it. I'm just going to zoom in. And as we increase the strength of the displacement map, you should see it's starting to adjust on any lines, any curves, any corners. You can see just by the hand as I'm adjusting the strength, it's moving and then up by the neck. It's very subtle, but it just adds that hint of realism that you need when you're applying flat text, images to a 3D object or a person. Yeah, this isn't looking too bad. It is very, very subtle. Quite liking this so far. I'm just going to go to adjustments now and I'm going to blur it a tiny bit because of the depth of field within the photo. Not much of the neck, the collarbone or the chest and shoulder is sharp. So I'm just going to come in, blur it a tiny bit so it fits in a little bit more. That's something you've got to think of when you're doing photo manipulations Um, your depth of field. You need to just match that up. Again, just to add that hint of realism. I've just grabbed the pen tool and I'm drawing around the tattoo layer. I say drawn around. I'm drawn on the tattoo layer, but I'm drawing around Grace the model. Because what I'm going to do is to create a mask. I love the pen tool. I know there's so many easier ways of doing selections, but I just find the pen tool and the paintbrushes for when I'm masking just so therapeutic. Just reminds me of like drawing and painting, so I love it. I've just completed my selection by going to the starting point. You can select to mask, but why do it the easy way? I've made my selection and now I'm going to go to my layers panel. After I hit Command and Z or undo in the bottom right hand corner. And I'm just going to go to the plus and I'm going to mask the layer. Instantly, everything that was going over all the edges has gone. My little marching ants there. So I'm going to go to the selection persona in the top left hand corner and deselect. You can see in the layers panel, there's a little triangle. I'm going to click that, bring that down my mask. And I'm just going to come in with a paintbrush and ever so gently with a very soft brush, low opacity, low flow, and just go around the edges. Just smoothing them out so they've got that similar sort of blur as what the neck does because of the depth of field. I have to admit, with the iPad, I haven't quite got the brushes as perfect as what I do within Photoshop um, on the computer. But it's taken me years to get a set of brushes that I love working with and having the right flow and opacity for each of them. Um, it's something I'll get used to eventually, but, you know, it's a work in progress. I do much prefer working on my iPad to my laptop though. The apps available for this thing, it, it's unreal. So I'm just ever so slightly blending this out on the layer mask. Um, you know, just to even it out. And if there's any mistakes, I can always go over with a white paintbrush and just bring it back in. This is the beauty of using layer masks. Yeah, I've gone a bit too far there, but you know, we'll just ever so gently brush some of that back in. Yeah, just go to white. I always have to do things the long way. I have to say, most of the shortcuts you do use on your keyboard for Photoshop and Affinity Photo can be used if you've got a keyboard for the iPad as well. 
So that is very handy. Just going to zoom out to pinch zoom. And just do some final touches. Yeah, I think let's just lower the opacity a little bit. Because with tattoos, you don't have that solid black. Even though it is a solid black, it's more of a matte and when the light shines on it, it has more grey. It's, it's a bit more subtle than what I just had. So just lower on the opacity a little bit, just added a hint of realism. There you go. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you all soon.